Aside from roadside explosives and Taliban and al-Qaeda fighters, NATO forces in Afghanistan are increasingly under attack by a new foe, friendly Afghan forces. Two more U.S. troops were shot yesterday in an insider shooting episode, bringing the total to a dozen soldiers in just over a week. And as Artis Ganesh Chikan now reports, this is a problem that multi-billion dollar defense projects just can't solve. The ads for military hardware in the U.S. look like Hollywood blockbuster trailers. Whether it's for a tactical armed drone which can fit into a backpack or for special robot-like clothing for soldiers. They sense what the user wants to do, where the user wants to go, it mimics the motion. We like to call these mantonomous systems. But many ask why, with all the high-tech gear, the U.S. can't win against men of simple means from some remote Afghan villages. A U.S. Marine general estimated that 80 percent of his troops' casualties in Afghanistan were caused by homemade bombs, components of which often cost no more than a few dollars. Jake de la Berda served in Afghanistan at the beginning of the war. The, the MRAPs and the uh, armored uh, Humvees uh, are cost millions of dollars, and they're destroyed by something that costs the price of a pizza. We don't have any effective weapons to combat that animosity, that rage against American presence. There's no such thing. It's sort of like if the Chinese moved into, you know, Wyoming. Are you somehow the Wyoming's going to be happy? No, not at all. There's no way to. We, they just simply want them to leave. The U.S. invests in military gear more than the world's 10 other biggest military spenders combined. The Pentagon resists cuts in their gigantic budget, arguing that they need to fight terrorists in other places. We continue to face very sec serious security challenges in the world of today. We are still at war in Afghanistan. We still confront terrorism, even though there's been significant damage to the uh, leadership of al-Qaeda. Uh, the reality is we confront terrorism in Somalia, in Yemen, in North Africa. The U.S. is extensively using drones to go after who they identify as terrorists. But will there ever be enough weapons to kill terrorists? Let's look at Anwar al awlaki before he was uh, assassinated by a drone. Uh, did we stop al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula? Did we stop al-Qaeda's march on Yemen? No, we did not. We actually, in many ways, made it worse by the fact that others besides Awaki were targeted and killed in that same campaign, civilians. We invest in the military hardware destruction, which obviously is, is the perpetuates the cycle of killing. Kill five, ten come back. You've got to have more hardware to kill that ten. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Sheffer says the Pentagon's obsession with military resources hasn't changed since the time when their enemy was the Soviet Union. It was all about the numbers. It was all very accountable regarding uh, hardware, hardware purchases, how, mu how many missiles can you have, how many can you defeat. It was all very binary, this or that, this or that. It was always, it was a match force on force. In current today's war, it's not like that. There's no force-on-force force equation. There's no way of measuring uh, the number of tanks that will take care of the Taliban because the Taliban doesn't use tanks. They don't need them. And so this is where our, our current paradigm, the U.S. paradigm on war, is completely outdated. All those fancy weapons certainly project power. But in real warfare, in Afghanistan, for example, all that advanced gadgetry still hasn't delivered victory. Some argue it's because while spending tremendous amounts of money on military gear, the U.S. has failed to fully understand their enemy and what motivates them to fight. I'm Ganesh Chakyan in Washington, RT.